Okay, let's uh, talk about the validities, the different types of how an uh, experiment can be valid or invalid. And really, that's what this course is about, the whole idea of designing valid experiments uh, and identifying valid experiments versus invalid experiments. So uh, in one way, uh, this course is about designing valid experiments. You do that by following standard designs. So the reason why we are teaching you about between subject designs, about different types of uh, sample selection techniques is so that you can identify what designs or what techniques you want to use, which will be a valid method in that situation. And then also you need to assess the validity of experiments. Uh, you're reading a lot of experiments. You need to be able to assess the validity of those experiments. Uh, also, if you go on and design an experiment for yourself, you need to be able to evaluate uh, you know, uh, and uh, assess the validity of the design before you actually do the experiment. And so understanding the different types of validities is very important. And of course, for your final paper in this class, you'll need to discuss the validity of the studies that you are reviewing. And if you don't know what I mean, stop right now and go over and take a look at your uh, writing assignment and the instructions for the final paper, because hopefully you've already read it by now. So what makes an experiment valid? Well, what is valid? Uh, valid means a sound basis in logic or fact. It's well-founded, sound, that is, the methodology is sound, it's logical, it's justifiable. Or if you want legal, that is, you did everything legally. And as you can see in our index in our textbook, uh, there are uh, many uh, pages uh, devoted to the different types of validity. And so let's talk about what makes an experiment valid. And I'm going to have to stop for a minute. There we go. What makes an experiment valid? Uh, the major types of validity are construct, internal, external, ecological, and statistical conclusion validity. Uh, construct validity is how well you operationally define the hypothetical constructs in your experiment. So we've talked about constructs such as helping, and we've talked about operational definitions such as the number of boxes that you'll move, and uh, that is what construct validity is about, how you know, well thought out those operational definitions are. Internal validity is the only, is, means that the uh, independent variable is the only thing changing between conditions. And so that means the experiment is confound free. External validity is how well the results can be generalized to other frames. And by frames, we mean other times, like can we generalize an experiment, the results of an experiment uh, from 1960 to today, uh, to settings. That is, can we generalize the results of an experiment in Amsterdam to the United States? And people, can we generalize the results of a study done on men to women? Ecological validity is how natural the procedure is. Uh, that is how typical or everyday or run-of-the-mill uh, the procedure or the behaviors of the subjects in the experiment. Some experiments are very artificial. They're done in a laboratory. Uh, subjects are doing things that are very, you know, frankly bizarre. Uh, and th those studies lack ecological validity. And then finally, we have statistical conclusion validity, which was the correct statistics used correctly in the experiment. Were they presented correctly also? And so these are the major types of validities that we'll be looking at this semester. And a term I toss in all the time is artifact, and it's not uh, you know, defined in the textbook, so I thought I'd have to uh, define it now. Uh, the idea is that a valid experiment will study an actual behavior, an actual human behavior. And that's what we want to do. We want to study real life actual behaviors. Uh, sometimes in experiments, an experiment which lacks certain types of validity, uh, the experiment will create behaviors itself. 
So what we're seeing the subject do in the experiment is not behave normally or naturally, but they're behaving artificially. And this artificial behavior is called an artifact. And so uh, in general, an artifact means a manufactured object. And in psychology, it specifically means an element of the study's research design or procedure that produces results itself. And so the presence of an artifact means that the experimental finding is the consequence of a flawed design or a lack of validity, a flawed design or procedure, rather than the reflection of a true behavior. 